like many musicians right now, you're probably in quarantine or with some sort of strict regulation trying to figure out how to make some money with your music right now. Now, obviously things like performances, touring, selling merchandise, recording sessions, they've been affected dramatically. Now, don't let this bring you down. This episode is not just like, oh, let's complain about how things bad are for musicians right now. On this episode, we're going to be talking about some ways you can fund your next musical project, whether it's an EP, an album, a single, a music video, or something else, and all from home. Also, you want to stick around until the end. There's a little something I want to give you. Welcome to the One Planet Music Podcast, where we explore the role of music in an ever-changing world. As a listener, you'll gain motivation, inspiration, and practical knowledge from fellow musicians and music professionals who are making an effort to perfect their craft while having meaningful impact. I'm your host, Daniel Rinaldi. So far on the podcast, I've had some amazing interviewees. We've been able to talk about so many beautiful things and getting amazing perspectives. This is a solo episode. Yep, just uh, me with myself interviewing myself. (laughs) But no, I'm talking to you. And this is actually something I've been wanting to do for a while. Just literally, I've had so many wonderful people to talk to that I even have, I just haven't made the time to like sit down and just talk to you. So this is the second episode, I guess technically the third, where it's just a solo episode. Um, I definitely want to do more of them. So, you know, stick around until the end. Um, Let me know what you think of it. I would love to hear your feedback. Okay, so let's talk about what are some common ways independent musicians like you and I uh, usually finance uh, our music whether it's our EP, our album, music video, or whatever other music project. Now, it's funny because, you know, I, I posted this on a Facebook group for musicians, actually on several Facebook groups, and I got so many responses from musicians and music professionals kind of sarcastically saying, uh, wait, you can finance music projects? <laughs> you know, like, and, and that the number one challenge for them to raise money for musical projects was, to raise money for musical projects. (laughs) So obviously this is an issue because if we're having this much trouble raising money for our musical projects, which is very important because we need to pay for it, whether it's studio time or for equipment, uh, for we need to pay other musicians, um, you know, we can only barter for so long, you know, travel, mixing, mastering, engineering, you know, promotion and like graphic design. There, there's just tons of stuff where we need to spend money. So some top ways that we usually raise money as musicians is one, depleting our savings account. Yep. Uh, just digging straight into that treasure. Although we should probably be saving that for an emergency or our kids going to university or getting married or, you know, important travels that we want to do, right? All of that sounds really nice. Let's let's try to do that. <laughs> um, another way is just to get into credit card debt. Um, obviously, some of us can have access to credit cards. They're very accessible and they can be very enticing at times and try to make us think that we can just spend and just pay it later. Um, quite honestly, it's not the smartest idea. My two cents is, and though we have always tried to use a credit card, is I try to use it like a debit card. If I don't have the money in the bank account, I don't use it. The only times I've actually gone into debt with credit card is when it's actually for something that will bring me more income. You know, if I'm spending money on something that's big, that is not like a a luxury, something I'm just going to be like consuming, you know, but something related to business that I know I will make a greater return on that investment. And the reality is, I mean, even though our music definitely sometimes can be an investment and we can get, you know, more money than what we spent on it, um, I would say if you're just starting out um, or if even if you already have like some singles or an album out, the reality is it's it is a little hard right now to get 
money back directly from your music, so to speak. So don't get into credit card debt if you can't pay it back without interest. Another one is to perform and tour, you know, and gigs, whether it's, you know, at a local restaurant, whether it's actually, you know, at small, medium to large venues, um, weddings or other events. Obviously, those are kind of out of the question at the moment, you know, as the time of recording this, a lot of us are in quarantine or some sort of restriction. And uh, it's just a little bit challenging, you know, things might open up pretty soon. Um, and it looks like they might, but things are not going to look the same. So another way we can raise funds for a project, um, although it's maybe not as common, is uh, getting government or NGO grants. I don't have much experience with this one, and I don't know many people that do, actually. Um, so I don't want to go into it too much, and I would have to research a little bit more. What I do know is that there is high competition. There's definitely low chance of getting them. And also in the end, you're not really like building community, like you're sort of just like getting the money and even sometimes being told to spend it in a very particular way. Like you have to meet cer certain requirements. If any of you have any experience, like especially if it's like really great experience, definitely share with me, you know, send me a message uh, so that I can be informed. A very common option too is selling merchandise. Now, selling merchandise, we're talking about t-shirts, CDs, cassettes, <laughs> yes, cassettes, vinyls, mugs, you know, hats, whatever it may be. Now, all of these things usually sell better at live shows and they definitely do require an initial large investment. Now, there are a few companies nowadays where you can do sort of like one-off prints or, or a low number of like t-shirt prints, for example, or, or mugs or hats, whatever it may be. But then the product in the end will be a little more expensive, not just for you, but also for the fan who's going to be buying it. A very common way that a lot of us fund our music is through a side hustle. Um, or maybe not even a side hustle per se, but even just our main job, whatever that may be, like a nine to five job. And then we do our music at nights and weekends. But some examples of that side hustle could be like teaching music lessons, having a little side business, you know, selling things online, whatever it may be, right? So that we could just do our music. Some of us are looking for jobs that are um, travel friendly, you know, that you can just take with you on the computer and, you know, are more virtual so that you can maybe tour if that's what you're doing. So it really depends. But overall, this concept of like you have this like big vision for your music. And then on the side, you're doing something else, even though that side hustle might take up quite a bit of time. So definitely the downside to that is that a lot of times it can be time consuming and not directly related to your music goals. But at the same time, obviously, if we need it, we need it, especially if we have families. Hey, I completely understand. That's where I'm at as well. A lot of times, you know, sometimes looking for those side hustles to make sure my wife and two kids are happy and we have a... <laughs> We have a happy home, you know, so it's a very realistic thing we have to take into account. One option that is not so common is uh, getting royalties from past music projects. I think this one applies more toward like veteran artists, you know, those who, you know, have been maybe doing this for a few years or even if it's just in recent years that they've they've made music. Maybe they had, quote unquote, some hits where they've been able to really get some royalties and can use that money and, and cash in. An option some musicians might be able to tap into is calling that rich aunt and uncle, <laughs> you know? Um, I'm simplifying here, obviously it could be any family member. It could even be your wife, it could be your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, it can be whoever. It could even be friends, right? That, that you really trust. Obviously, you know, that's completely doable. I think you just have to look at family dynamics and see like, you know, by me doing this, is it really worth risking my family relationship? Because the reality is you have to ask yourself, like, am I asking for a loan, uh, even if it's no interest? Or am I asking for just like, I need some money and I'm not going to pay back or don't expect me to pay back or anything along those lines? You have to really look at the dynamic and ask yourself, what do you cherish more? Your current music project or your relationship with that family member or friend. And if you feel like by asking money from that person, 
might jeopardize a relationship, then don't do it. And lastly, at least on on my list, is crowdfunding. Um, So this is the concept of basically the last one of sort of asking family and friends for for money. But the concept is a little bit different because it's usually going through a platform, a very common one being Kickstarter, but there are definitely many other options and where you set up this whole campaign and it's very systematic. You set up a video, you tell your story, you set up rewards and people give you money and usually in exchange for some sort of reward like buying the CD or album ahead of time or or getting a signed copy or getting some merchandise with it, anything along those lines. Now, crowdfunding is usually known to be like a one-off event, you know, like you do a campaign, let's say a 30-day or a 60-day campaign and that's it and you raised, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 60,000, 100,000. I mean, some artists have even raised raised millions of dollars for a single project and then what right so we'll we'll get into that but there are some platforms now one particularly patreon that is allowing you to crowdfund on a regular basis on a monthly basis and so this is a super attractive option we'll get into that a little bit later so i know i just said a lot but i just wanted to go through a lot of the options that independent artists have to finance their music projects nowadays. And they all have their pros and cons, for sure. But there is one I want to focus on that for me has just been my favorite, and that is crowdfunding. The thing is, look, with crowdfunding, you can raise money relatively quickly and to pay all expenses related to your project. You know, this means like there might not even be any upfront costs. You just sort of get the money in one instance and then pay all of your expenses and you're good to go. Um, That to me is just like pretty magical. While with a lot of other ways, you have to do some sort of initial investment of sorts, whether it's of time or money. Now, obviously with a campaign, you do have to invest time, but not necessarily as much. So by relatively quickly, I mean like in 30 days, you can have that amount, like 30, like one to two months, basically you can get the amount you need for a big project. While usually, let's say, even if you're doing a side hustle, it might take you one year to raise that same amount of money. And secondly, one of the biggest reasons I really love crowdfunding is because you build community organically. You build this fan base. The reason for this is because you're letting people into your process of creating the project. You know, again, whether it's an EP, an album, a music video, whatever it is, The reality is long gone are the days where artists can release an album or a single just out of the blue. (laughs) Um, Fans really expect to be let into the process now. You know, they want to see the behind the scenes and they want to contribute to the making of the project, even if it's in a small way. And it means a lot to them and they feel that connection with the artist and the project. And once they feel that connection, you're able to establish that connection. It's a relationship and they're going to be there for years to come. So like with any option for raising money for a musical project, there are definitely pros and cons. And, you know, a crowdfunding campaign can definitely have its cons, but they're very few. Some of you might think, "Mm, how many people do I need to raise the money? Right. You'd be surprised by these numbers, actually. It obviously depends on the project and the amount you're trying to raise. But on average, people spend $60 on music crowdfunding campaigns. So if you do the math, this means you would need only 16 people to raise $1,000, 83 people to raise 5,000, and 166 to raise 10,000. You get the idea. So from my perspective, that's not a lot of people to raise a decent amount of money for a project. Some of you might say, you know, I I don't know. I don't have a large fan base. Like, I don't think I can raise the money, you know? Well, you know, if this is the case, there are some some workarounds. Um, One way is it really helps to collaborate with other people on the project so that they're also invested in the campaign and they'll want to tap into their networks. 
So all of a sudden, their audience becomes your audience and vice versa. You know, they want the campaign to be successful. So you're not just pulling now from your 200, 300, 500, 1,000, you know, member fan base, but maybe you've now all of a sudden doubled or even tripled your fan base because of the people that you're collaborating on the project. So that's one, definitely collaborate. Now, another workaround, I mean, not really a workaround, this is more like a tip, is try to really think what's the minimum amount we need to raise to do the project, or at least a good chunk of the project. Because, yeah, if it's your first time doing a campaign, I I would recommend try to shoot for the lowest amount, but not too low. Definitely not under $1,000. It has to be above $1,000. Statistically speaking, campaigns under $1,000 are less successful because it's kind of saying like, why are you just trying to raise a few hundred dollars? You know, Um, doesn't make a lot of sense. So try to think of the minimum goal you need and shoot for that. So it might mean that with the minimum goal, you can record three songs, so to speak. Let's say it's $3,000. You can record three songs and but you really wanted to record five well let's say during the campaign you reach that three thousand dollar goal well guess what you can add a milestone you can say hey guys uh thank you so much that we were able to raise three thousand we still have two weeks left in the campaign hey let's shoot for that five thousand and we'll record five songs you get it so you can always add these milestones even during the campaign you can change the goal you can always go up but you can't really go down and plus it's kind of sad to go down it, It feels great to go up for you and for your audience. So there's definitely a lot more I could share about crowdfunding, but right now I want to stop and because you might be thinking, all right, this actually sounds pretty sweet. I think I could do it, or at least I'm curious about, uh, you know, learning more about this. But where do I get started? You know, what platform do I use? You know, what's the first step? So, I mean, there are definitely many sites that, are available for crowdfunding. I mean, there's like GoFundMe, there's Indiegogo, uh, there's Kickstarter, and and there's several others. I personally have had experience with Kickstarter. I've done it several times for other artists and for projects uh, of my own, and they've been successful, you know, raising as low as $1,500 to tens of thousands of dollars. So, I mean, I can only speak from whatever experience I've had, but I would recommend Kickstarter. One big differentiator is the like the rules and limitations that they apply. So each each platform kind of has its own little quirks and kind of what they allow, what they don't allow. And Kickstarter, I feel like, has really thought very deeply about like what restrictions apply well for creatives. And you can definitely look them up, you know, go go to their website and find out, or you know, you can ask me some more and I'll give you some more details. Um, but I just feel like they've really rounded out uh, their service uh, for for creatives. While many of the other platforms, I, I kind of get this sense of like, um, just like donate, you know, just like give me money so that I can do what I want with it. <laughs> and that's not the sensation that I get from Kickstarter. Another platform you should definitely look into also geared perfectly well toward creatives and it's built by creatives is Patreon. Go to patreon.com. Um, again, this is uh, for a monthly and like this rec- re- recurring uh, crowdfunding so that like either, you know, the fan is charged on a monthly basis or even every time you put out content. Let's say you're putting out uh, music videos every two weeks. Well, then your your fans can be charged every two weeks if they want to be. Um, and again, it's also by reward system and all this. I don't have too much experience with it, too much personal experience, um, but I know it's wonderful. I've been a patron for other projects and I recently started a Patreon account for the podcast. Uh, so, hey, if you want to experience being a backer on Patreon, go to patreon.com slash one planet music and uh, be one of the first <laughs> patrons for the, the the podcast. I haven't been promoting it too much uh, since I'm just, you know, kind of learning more about it and seeing how to use it for the podcast. But if you want to be a guinea pig, be my guest. (laughs) So that's it for this episode. There is definitely much more I could share about crowdfunding, but that is the reason I told you to stick around till the end. 
because there is a little something I have for you. I hope you like it. Basically, there's some more nuggets about crowdfunding I would love to share with you, some more insights that could really help you. But most of all, I want to hear from you and your current situation. And if you feel like this method of funding could work for your current project or an upcoming musical project, even while you're in quarantine. So I would love to have a free call with you where we can talk about these things. I just I want to hear about your project and we can see if, if it's a good fit. And I am coaching artists and musicians to help them design the campaign launch it and accompany them throughout the whole process. So if you're interested, sign up for this free call at oneplanetmusic.com slash coaching. So that's oneplanetmusic.com slash coaching. I'll put it in the notes as well. So you can just click on it. And basically, you'll be able to select a date and time that works best for you. Um, there are definitely limited slots. Um, so the earlier you get there, the sooner we can talk. And I look forward to hearing from you. As always, if you liked this episode, if you found value in this episode, you know, take a screenshot on your phone, share it with your family and friends, tell them what you enjoyed about it, what stood out, and maybe they can find something of value as well. You've been listening to the One Planet Music Podcast, and I'm your host, Daniel Rinaldi. Much love. Much love.